He heard it there. We trust him with what's in the oven, but not in the pots. <laughs> not in the pots. Uh, uh, and I'm glad, Ryan, that your wife finds you funny. You know, I'm really glad. I was glad she didn't say funny looking, you know. <laughs> No, we're so blessed in our church to have so many dads that we get to honor. Amen. They say that we live in a fatherless generation. And more and more we see less and less dads. But I am actually feel like at New Life we're starting to see a trend change. I feel like we're starting to see more fathers come back into the role that they have in their homes. So continue to pray for our dads. We love them and we pray for them. And uh, we hope you have a special day, dads. I've got a message for dads and for moms and for everybody in between today. I'm going to speak about lessons that we learned in the cave. How to behave in a cave. Great. So I'm going to give you lessons on how to behave in a cave. I'm going to help you learn. We're going to learn from David because David actually spent some time in a cave. He spent some time in a cave when he was in exile. He was running away from um, Saul, who wanted to kill him, who was jealous of him, and he was in a cave. And it was a dark season of his life. And we need to remember that life is full of seasons, amen? And seasons come for different reasons. And we need to grow and develop from these seasons in our life. I know this season feels like it has been a long one. It feels like it's had a lot of twists and turns. We've learned a lot. I didn't have gray hair in my beard at the beginning of lockdown. At the end of lockdown, there's like gray hair here. But now we understand more and more I'm growing in what it means to draw near to God and to trust God for His will and His way in my life. So caves are weird places. Uh, Have you been in a cave? I've been in a cave. Um, I've been in the caves down here at um, Cape St. Blaise. And I've been in the cave, Kango Caves, you know, big caves. And uh, Kango Caves have this one very scary, thin, scary space. It's called the Devil's Chimney, all right? And um, I remember going with a friend of mine. I, I've been there many times, all right? The one time I went there, there's a little place called the Post Box where you've got to slide through. And I nearly ended up being a permanent part of the cave there. <laughs> <laughs> that's a story for another day. But we went into this cave, and I went with one of my friends, who's claustrophobic, big time. And he, he, he fought us all the way. He's like, no, he's not going in here. He's not going to do this. And then I said, come, just do it with us. Just come in the cave. And he came with us. And then eventually there's this one part that they call Jacob's Ladder, this long ladder into this little door, and then you're stuck in a small space from then on. We got halfway up that ladder. He decides, no way. Uh-uh. He's not going anymore. He's staying just here. He stopped the whole tour group. I had to wait with him at the bottom. They said, okay, we're going to go around in the circle and we'll come back and meet you. And I was like, what? And he's like, don't worry. The lights go off behind us, but just stay here. You'll be fine. And we were stuck in this little part of the Kango Caves with all the lights off. <laughs> and my claustrophobic friend freaking out, you know, telling me about how many... How much, do we know how much tons is above us right now? And if this had to sink away? And I started getting claustrophobic by the end of that as well. But there's different ways to behave in a cave. You've got to walk differently. You've got to act differently. You've got to watch out for the slippery floors. Caves are not like the other seasons in our life. But they do come across. They do happen. And so we're going to look at what David did to survive in the cave. Firstly, David learned to face his fears. We need to face our fears. David wasn't running away from that which he was scared of. He started praying this prayer in Psalm 142 verse 5. It says this, Hear my cry, for I am very low. Rescue me from my persecutors, for they are too strong for me. I don't know what this season has felt like for you, but maybe you've had a couple of days where you felt like, God, I am very low right now. I am very low. The church WhatsApp line has never got messages like it's gotten the last couple of months. Messages, not just asking for food and for help. Messages saying, I'm so depressed. A month hasn't gone by that we've had somebody reach out to us and say, I'm thinking about ending my life. 
This is a difficult season. And David speaks to God directly. He says, God, I'm very low. Hear my cry. Hear my cry. Rescue me from my persecutors, for they are too strong for me. So often we forget these words. David said this himself. He said, my persecutors, they are too strong for me. Man, this does it. is this the same guy that took a stone and flung it at Goliath's head? Is this the same guy that wasn't scared for anything, that knew the purpose that God had for him? And now, next season, he finds himself in a cave where he's saying, my persecutors are too strong for me. Every season in our life has a reason. And because you feel like it's too much, because you feel like your persecutors are too strong, doesn't mean there's anything wrong with you. There's a mental health check right here. It's okay to not be okay. If we learned to pray like David, we would pray much more raw prayers. Prayers that say, God, I don't know how to face tomorrow. God, I don't know how to go to work today. I don't feel like getting out of this bed today, God. Give me strength, because I feel like there's none left in my life. And he goes on to say this, Bring me out of prison, so that I can thank you. The gold, the, the, the gold will crowd around me. The good will crowd around me. For you are good to me. You are good to me. He's saying, God, just get me out of this prison. He wasn't really in prison. He was in a cave. But it felt like he was in a prison. It felt like wherever he moved, he couldn't get escape. It felt like there was no getting out of this. That's how I felt this week when we had another family meeting. <laughs> I thought, my goodness, I'm never, we're never getting out of this. Like everybody, you know, like I remember last year being like, don't worry, by Christmas it's going to be fine. We're not going to be wearing masks by December. That's what I thought, eh? That was my expert opinion. Now nobody trusts me as an expert anymore. <laughs> and I say, and I feel like this. I'm saying, God, can I get out of this prison now? This mask. This way that we can't just do church like we used to do in church. We've got to face our fears. You know where you start facing your fears? By confronting them. By speaking them. Really. It's about saying that to God. Saying to God, God, I'm feeling this way. Help me to change that. God, I felt this today. And I know that's wrong. I know as a child of God, I'm not supposed to feel like that. But help me to change. Help me to see it differently. Help me to believe better, God. Then we've got to kneel down and pray. Kneel down and pray. This is what David did. This is what made it so key in David's life, is that he knew that what was going to get him out of this cave was going to be communication with God. You've got to face your fears, but then you've got to kneel down and pray. And I'm not talking about, you know, just you know, saying grace. I'm not talking about the prayers we pray in the car when somebody's cutting in front of us and we need forgiveness. I am talking about making time to get on my knees in my bedroom and pray. I am talking about calling on heaven to change earth prayer. We need to schedule time for prayer. We schedule time for everything else. We need to schedule time for prayer. Because David said this in 57 verse 1, Have mercy on me, O God. Have mercy. I look to you for protection. I will hide beneath the shadow of your wings until I, until you... What did it say then? <laughs> All right. You know, hiding underneath God's shadow, this is what this prayer does for us. Prayer puts us in a place that we should be. It puts us in protection from God. It puts us in that safe place under His wings. It puts us near to Him. It puts us near to the plans that He has for us. It reminds us that we're safe. I don't know about you, but this is what I need to do when it gets hectic, when the mask is too much, when the meetings are too crazy. I need to go into my room and I need to pray. And somehow, something in me starts changing. The Holy Spirit starts working and I start seeing different things happen. I cry out to God Most High. 
to God who will fulfill his purposes for me. To God who will fulfill his purposes for me. When we pray, we realize that God's got a purpose for my life. That no matter what the lockdown level is, no matter what the employment rate is, no matter what the economy is doing, God has a purpose for my life. He has a plan for me, and His purpose will be fulfilled. His purpose will come to pass. And in verse 3 it says, He will send help from heaven to rescue me. Oh, David, he's saying the right words here. Disgracing those who hound me, my God will send forth His unfailing love and His faithfulness. God will send His love to us. Isn't that amazing? He will send help from heaven to rescue us. You, you know what? There's, a, there, there's something we've got to understand in the cave. There's something we've got to understand in the darkness. That God is a rescuer. He is a rescuer. And He is a very present help in time of need. And He says to us, I will be your strength. I will be your refuge. I will be your safety. Just learn to come and kneel down in my presence. Come and learn to make me Lord of your life so that I can be Lord over your life. Alright, then we've got to stand to our feet. Because you know what happens if you stay in a cave for too long? You become a caveman. You become a cave woman. You become so used to your comfort. You become so used to your anxiety, you become so used to running away from that which you can't confront that you eventually stay there. We need to stand to our feet. We need to take hold of every promise that God has for us. But the Lord will redeem those who serve Him. Amen? No one who takes refuge in Him will be condemned. The Lord will redeem those who serve Him. Our God is a redeemer. Our God is the God who is there for us. That we can stand up and we can walk out. That there isn't anything in your past. There isn't anything that anybody could have said to you, about you, that could impact the way that God could redeem you. He is always the redeemer. He is always the one who comes and rescues. He is never the God that says, you are beyond my help. I can't reach you anymore. There's nothing more I can do for you. No, He is the God that is always there. So stand up. Stand to your feet. Take refuge in Him. Take refuge in Him. If there's anything this season can teach us, it's to be children of God who run into His presence and find safety and find wholeness, and find strength. The Lord will redeem. How do we behave in a cave? We face our fears. We kneel down and we pray. And then we stand to our feet. This season requires us to be active, not passive. See, a lot of times we think the cave, I'm just going to wait in the cave until it's all over. God didn't let David wait in the cave. In fact, if you go read there in 1 Samuel, you read a whole bunch of stories about what happened to David in the cave. He had many adventures in the cave. But he learned to trust in God. He learned to pray. He learned to put into practice these three things. Don't let this season be a season that your life is put on hold. Don't let this be a season that your marriage is put on hold. Don't let this be a season that your relationship with God and the purpose that He has for you is put on hold. Let this be a season that grows you. Let this be a season that develops you. Let this be a season that God can use for greater things in your life. So I'm going to ask you right now, just close your eyes. I don't know what your cave looks like. And everybody has been affected by this. Everybody in this season is going through a lot. Some of us greater than others. Maybe you're sitting here today with a loss. You've lost family. Maybe you've lost business. Maybe you've lost income. 
whatever it is. Whatever it may be. Know that God is forming you in the season. And He is getting you ready for a greater purpose. He is getting you ready for more. More than you can think of, dream, or imagine. So Lord, I pray. I pray for everyone here in this room, God. I pray that you would help us to face our fears. Help us, Father God, to look to you, to trust your word and your way. And Lord Jesus, I pray that we would kneel down. I pray that we would learn to know what it means to speak to heaven, to call change on this earth. And Jesus, I pray that we would stand up and we would walk tall. I pray that we would not make our home in the cave, but I pray that we would let the cave serve its purpose to release us into greater things. I pray for our families. I pray for our fathers this morning. May the cave not turn them into cave men, but may it release them to be kings. Father God, I pray for this season. I pray that we would not be so downcast that we find ourselves in darkness, but that even though we sit in a cave, may we know there is a light that shines within us through us, around us, that you are with us, that there is no getting away from your love, your unfailing love, your redemption. We love you, Jesus. Help us to behave in the camp. In Jesus' name, amen.